Hello everyone and thanks for stopping by my channel. I am Serge T. In this video I will be taking a look at, well not taking a look, how can I look at a video that I'm doing. <laughs> I'll be talking about, giving my review and rundown on uh, Monday Night Raw. First of all, before I continue, I just want to thank those of you who are supporting my channel subscribing and liking please continue uh, to do so I, pr I would very much appreciate it uh, but uh, let's go on with the video let's go on with my thoughts on uh, Monday Night Raw and first we see EO and Lyra arrive then Gunther and Jay arrive now all these men and women will compete in the semi-final matchups tonight for the king and queen of the ring, respectively. The reigning IC champ Sami Zayn is in the ring. Another promo on Monday Night Raw. And is Sami's reign as IC champ amounted to anything yet? Yet his current feud with Gable is promising and they need this as a way to build up Zayn's reign. Because we don't want a ho-hum reign after Gunther's historic one. Now, why would he put up his title in a triple threat? That's what he talks about. That's what he says. I mean, he could lose it without even being pinned. He wants to take care of two problems at once. Gable is a personal reason. And Reed, Bronson Reed, well, he just wants the title. It's like business, all business with him. But Sammy is the man who defeated the undefeatable at being Gunther. And Gable comes out. And talks. This is while he was he was still talking, and Gable decides to come out, and he talks of coaching Sammy to his victory over Gunther, but he feels he has been too nice to all the people, and the three clowns in his Alpha Academy, all losers as far as he can he's concerned. I wonder what he has over them. They just continue to eat that what you call that that shit sandwich that he keeps serving them. I don't know why, especially um Otis. And we'll talk about that later. But Sammy feels he has heard enough and asked the Alpha Academy the question. How long are they going to take Gable's crap? But Gable, he, he's got their recommitment and then he cuts them off before they even have a chance to answer. Well, Sammy reminds the leader of the uh, Alpha Academy that they have a one-on-one -on -one tonight and why don't they do it now? And the match is on and Sammy is all over Gable and eventually clotheslines him over the top rope. But back from the break, and Gable regains the advantage, but misses a flying headbutt on the inside of the ring and has his attempted blue thunder bomb reversed, and Gable regains control. Before I continue, why is it that it seems like every time they come back from a break that the heel always has, you know, he always regains control of the match? That's what I always notice. This is weird. I don't know if this is how they go about you know, the the way they, uh, you know, book it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but it always happens. And then Gable is such a controlling, manipulative, miserable human being. And he tried to get Maxina Tozawa to cheat for him. And since they won't, Gable sends them to the back, a la how the referees do. But Sammy delivers... The blue thunder bomb and gets a near fall. He then goes for the Michinoku driver, but Gable turns it into an ankle lock and sends him outside. But Otis isn't going to hit Zane also, and proceeds to get a slap from Gable, and he just sits there and takes it. What's going on, Otis? I mean, come on, you know. But Zane delivers the exploder suplex in the corner. And then we see Otis clothesline Sammy as he prepares to deliver the Haluva kick. And Gable is then able to deliver the Chaos Theory and pins the IC champ. So Otis, Otis, Otis. What's going on, buddy? It's like you're taking that from him. I guess he just, you know, owes him a lot. And he just doesn't want to go against him. But you know it's going, it's coming. It's not in time for... Uh, you know, the king and queen of the ring, PLE, but the next one, maybe? What's the next one? Uh, the 
crown jewel or is it um, the uh, Bastion Berlin? We will see. Now, the QR code is brought up by the commentators as one popped up during this match. Again, like that. And you don't have time to even try to, you know, you know, to, because I got one of those apps that, you know, you can read QR codes. And it's just like, you know, you can't really pause it. I mean, you probably can after a bunch of tries, but they don't keep it up there that long. You know, I think, I think even Bray's, when they did it when Bray was alive and they did his QR codes, those things would, would stay on for at least a little good amount. Not, not forever, but, you know, enough that you can kind of get your thing or get your phone or get something to, to click it. I don't know why they're so quick with it. And he brings up the fact that the previous one, we saw a psychotherapist in a session, and then later we see her go missing. You know, that's very, very uh, odd. What's that about? I don't know. It has, you know, Bray's uh, Firefly Funhouse, all the little creatures there, all of them. I've been in a mental health ward or something like that. I don't know. But now, next up is a vignette by Io Sky, the former WWE Women's Champion, and she says this, uh, Since I arrived, I have dominated everyone in my way. I've been champion of the world, but now I am ready for my crown. Damage Control took over SmackDown, and once I'm queen, everybody on everyone on Raw will have no choice but to bow down. Especially Lyra Valkyria. Lyra, you're soaring now, but you've been flown you've flown too close to the sun. You're in my domain and you will fall because I am the genius of the sky and soon I will be queen of the ring. Easier said than, son, than done, Eo, because Lyra Valkyria has been on a roll and it looks like this, this, might, this might be her year, but we'll see in their match. Now backstage, Cruz del Toro is attacked. And who's behind it? Does anyone care? You know, are we still doing the uh, LWO versus Legato? But at the same time, if we thought that Carlito might go to Legato, but now he's trying to get into the Judgment Day. So we're looking at Judgment Day taking on LWO. That could be a, a, a better kind of thing, a better fit, you know, for that. But then again... They are separated now, Legado and what do you call it? And um, LWO. And it's a good thing that they still, when they drafted LWO, Carlito was part of the package still, you know what I mean? So that way he can be there and he can kind of facilitate a feud. And looking like he's going to try to, you know, get Judgment Day behind him. But that's easier said than done as well. Now, Braun Breaker makes his debut on Monday Night Raw. He was picked sixth overall in the draft. And how many seconds will this match last with Kale Dixon? Well, I hope Braun destroys Kale just for the simple fact that I hate Kale, the so called veggie. I remember being in the military and the Marines, and when we used Kale, we used it for a garnish, for decoration. And I remember my staff sergeant telling me, that's not edible. So I don't know if it's just those weirdo vegans. Sorry if I if I offend anybody, but but those people who are behind it, I should say the people that are behind making it a something that's edible. I've tried it in salad and it's nasty. I don't know who likes kale, but uh, more power to you, I guess. Now, as the bell rings, he is heard in the corner saying he wasn't included in the King of the Ring tournament, which I think also was a very, very, like, miscalculation on WWE and Adam Pierce and, you know, those guys. And in his frustration, he spears Kale in half and does the same outside. Now, according to this, these guys, the commentators, they mentioned that Kale, I think it was Pat McAfee, that, that uh, Kale Dixon was a former bachelorette or a former, or a former bachelor. Which, hopefully this is a better step up for him because The Bachelor and The Bachelorette sucks. I don't know how that show is still on because every time a girl wins or every time a girl is about that, what does she do? She ends, when she wins, she picks the guy, right? And then, not, not even a few months later, six months later, they've broken up. Uh, then she moves on to the next one. It's just like, it's the same outcome every time. Why does the show show on when 
It's almost like what it is, it's a portfolio stuff or it's like these women and men too, they want to just use this as a way to like pad their resume. Oh, look at me. I was on Bachelor. I was on The Bachelorette, a popular TV show. I've never gotten to understood the appeal of that show and I don't, I don't think I ever will. And then uh, the match is called off and then Breaker gets a head of steam bouncing off the ropes and spears Kale again. He is out of control and Pierce needs to address his frustrations and book him better. And then later on, we know Braun blames Pierce. Adam Pierce saying it's his fault as he was not included in the King of the Ring tournament. And a side note, and I missed it. Or didn't hear it last week as SmackDown will make its debut in Saudi. And that's why Randy talked about facing Tama Tonga in Saudi. I'm like, okay, that makes sense now. Because I honestly was wondering, because I don't guess I didn't hear it. Maybe I was looking away. Because I'm pretty sure they mentioned it on SmackDown. They had to have maxed on SmackDown that next week. They're going to be in Saudi. But I just didn't hear it. You know? But it makes sense now, like I said. Okay. Because for the first time, they're going to be emanating from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, the SmackDown, the first time. And that's history making. That's pretty cool uh, that they're able to do that. And uh, I'm pretty sure the crowd usually are rowdy in that country when they have a pay-per-view and stuff like that. So let's see how, how it goes over. over there. Now, backstage, Lyra talks to, I mean, Becky talks to Lyra backstage, pumping her up. And Lyra simply tells her, Becky, I got this. And up next is the Queen of the Ring Tournament Semis match. Lyra Valkyria versus Io Sky. Now, wow, these two women are just evenly matched. Going hold for hold and reversal for reversal. A bunch of offensive moves. The only way for someone to get control is to ground the other. Lyra likes to soar and fly, but Io is the genius of the sky. So one of these birds need to have their wings clipped. Now, Io gets to it and grounds Lyra and she's wearing her down and at one point delivers a backbreaker from a position where she had Lyra that was lifted up you know like a stalling type of you know pretty much you're looking like you're gonna do a suplex and then she just drops her on her back and man if her if her back was gonna snap it would have snapped right there luckily she's in shape she's fit so it ain't gonna happen that easy to Lyra but man we couldn't see it, we couldn't feel it, but I know that Lyra Valkyria did, and that didn't look pleasant when she got, you know, when she ended up uh, beyond receiving end of that backbreaker. But Lyra has heart, she sure does, and she kicks out time after time and connects with a drop kick through the second ropes. Her it's been her signature move every match. And then she hits a crossbody and tops it off with a fisherman buster for a near fall. Now, a cross face is locked in by EO Sky after reversing a swinging pendulum submission move. Something I've not seen in a long ass time where the person's facing down and you're on top of them and then you have the arm and leg hooked and then you're just swinging her back and forth like this. I've seen, I've seen like wrestlers who would do that in the corner and then make a person's head bounce off the damn turnbuckle. <laughs> It's like one of those movies, the old school, but I haven't seen in a long time. And Lara Valkyria, she's someone who, more more, than, more so than, than not, I bet you think she's a, uh, someone who was, looks at tape, looks at old school wrestling, looks at something so that she can kind of put it in her repertoire, you know? Because sometimes moves like that are, are forgotten for the more flashier stuff and like the, you know how the new generation of wrestlers are. But... Um, then, uh, you know, after that, Sky hits a double drop kick soon after and hits double knees into the back of Lyra Valkyria as she is draped over the second rope. Now, Sky looks to hit the over the moon salt, but is stopped by Lyra, who misses a tornado DDT and is hit with a moon salt by Eo on the outside. It's all over the place, man. These girls, these ladies are just something else. If they're not in the, inside the ring, they're outside the ring, you know. And they're just all over the place. I love it. Now, Lyra would hit the Tornado DDT and a Fisherman Buster for a near fall, but Io hits a German and a Meteora and sets up Lyra for the over the moonsault, but is stopped yet again. 
these ladies are just invading because it's like, you know, you could tell they've been doing some their homework and been watching some film and doing their thing in order to make sure that they know how to counter each move. Now, she delivers a powerbomb to Lyra and misses the moonsault and Lyra delivers the Nightwing. My bad, because, well, actually, she turns a reversal by Io and pins Sky and gets the victory and advances to the finals, where she will meet the winner of Nia Jax, Bianca Belair match that will happen this coming Friday on SmackDown. And might I say that if Lyra wins the whole thing, she is definitely a made woman in WWE and will be a future champion on the main roster. If you look at her trajectory and how she's just moving up the ranks, this has been done to women before and what has happened to them. They've been the top, won the world title, and they've been maintaining that spot. Bianca Belair, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Bailey, Sasha Banks when she was here. When you see that, you know that that's what's in store for them. Don't know what they saw in Lyra. I'm not saying that as a thing. I'm just saying that what did they see in her? Because I know what I see in her. Very talented, an amazing performer. Like I said in past videos, I've been watching her since she was in NXT UK. And so they definitely have seen something. I don't know what is it, what it is, but I'm sure they've seen something good in her and something that they are going to push her because there's plenty of women that are just as talented, but they don't get pushed. So there's just that one little X factor, I guess what it is, that kind of sets her apart from the other women that are trying to get to the top or at least trying to have that spot. That's only to reserve for what? How many women? Five women, six women, right? That are circled around the main event, the, the title and everything. But uh, that's that's definitely what I see, and I'm sure she's gonna definitely be there. She's gonna, I predict she's gonna win this. She'll win the whole thing, and then she will go on to challenge Becky Lynch, friend versus friend. That the same old thing that we've seen before, but I like this one. It kind of works, and it's gonna be fun to watch and see what happens. They might even go go at it as friends and respect and all that stuff around, you know. Becky's been in the business for 22 years, 20 plus years. So you know that she's kind of looking probably to put someone over and be the next one. You'll, you'll hear that in her, when she, in her speech later on, in her, in her promo later on, she talks about that. Now, we have post-match comments from Lyra Valkyria, and she pretty much says, but the trick is you don't always have to know how you're going to get the job done as long as you believe that you can and she is only one night wing away from becoming queen of the ring. And that is true. I mean, in this match, she didn't use the night wing, but she may use it. Oh, I don't know. Because if, let's say she faces uh, Nia Jax. That's going to be a tour. That's going to be a task because Nyra, I mean, you know, Nia Jax is that irresistible force, man. She's somebody that you wouldn't be able to get up in that type of a move. But let's see what she can do if she faces her. But she could be facing... Bianca Belair, and that's going to be an athletic match. That's going to be a really, really great match between two kind of like similar styles in the sense that they can take you inside, outside the ring. They can do technical. They can do athletic. They can do, um, you know, high high flying moves and stuff like that. Nia's is going to look to ground her and ground and pound and set her up for that annihilator. But we'll see who wins that match on Friday. And then... A little, uh, a little backstage segment with uh, R-Truth. And in the end, he's like, then they say, I'm crazy. As he sees the Miz talking to the sky. Like he's talking and then in comes, you know, R-Truth. But the thing about it, though, is that that R-Truth was merely saying that he could use Andre the Giant. Well, no, 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 that was... Uh, <laughs> That's the Miz. He was talking and he was pretty much saying that, you know, that he can use Andre the Giant in spirit in their match tonight against the Judgment Day. And uh, JD McDonough and Finn Balor, because, you know, R Truth told Miz that Andre will help them to even the odds against the Judgment Day. He tells him, well, truth, Andre's passed away. And he's like, and then, um, and then uh, Truth was like, Passed away where? Like, 
passed away, truth. What do you? What else do you think that passed away means? Uh, you know how his segments. We love our truth, and it doesn't get any. It doesn't get old. It doesn't. It's just he has just has a way of not only how he performs in the ring, still does that 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 split in the ring. He, sometimes I feel I, I could feel I'm like oh God, how does he not hurt himself? And he does all these moves and like he did 20, 10, 15 years ago, maybe even twenty years ago. I mean, the guy's phenomenal and funny too. A lot of fun. The one thing though too is like this is part of the later match that they have when they defend their titles. But the Miz really is killing the vibe. When he comes out and he's trying to be on the level of our truth and entertaining and rapping and hyping up the crowd, but he really looks like he's trying too hard. And I think that he needs to kind of scale that back and just let our truth do it. And then you could be like the hype man, but do it in private, in, in in silence, you know. Because if you can't do it right, then don't do it at all. Because he's kind of he's kind of killing the vibe when our truth comes out. Now backstage, a lot of backstage segments here. Dragunov is confronted by Ricochet, who lets him know that it ain't over between them. You know, they had that great match and that, uh, was that, that qualifier for, um, what do you call it, for the King of the Ring tournament? And then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Ricochet is speared into the equipment cases by Braun Breaker. And remember, he can't be controlled, as he told Raw GM Adam Pierce early in the evening. Now Gunther addresses the empty crowd. Well, he doesn't address the empty crowd, but he's walking down an empty, you know, crowd. You know, empty state, uh, empty arena. Walking down the steps, and he says, "Well, I have to admit, just a month ago, I made fun of Jay Uso, and I told him simple gestures for simple people. And quite frankly, I was wrong." Because he turned himself into the hottest thing going on Monday Night Raw. And tonight, when Jay Uso will make his way to the ring, all those seats will be filled with thousands of people throwing their hands in the air, chanting his name, and filling this room with hope and delusion. Or is it illusion? Well, the bad news is, I am in the business of taking hope away and dragging people back down to the ground of reality. Because tonight, when main event Jey Uso takes on the ring general, in the semifinals of the King of the Ring tournament, it's not about who's more a more exciting act on the way to the ring, but who's the better professional wrestler when that bell rings. And Jay, I'm sorry to say, you might be the most exciting showman in this company today, but in that ring, I am superior to you. And after that bell, that final bell, all those people are going to embrace me, already the general in that sacred ring, soon to be king of the ring. Very good uh, promo, very good uh, way to just focus on him, no noise, no people talking over him, just Gunther come, talking from a, 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 you know, a place of honesty. He's pretty much telling Jay, you got no chance. You know, the hope of all these people is going to be crushed after I get through with you, pretty much what he's saying. Now, we go back to the in the to the Judgment Day's dressing room, and Priest lets Carlito know that they aren't his personal protection. As Priest told him, he must have missed the APA sign. And that was a good, that was a good line. Because, yeah, remember how the APA, right? They're back there, that door set up, even though there's open space around it but the door you have to knock on the door open it and then you have to you know you ask them for help to take care of, of people that are giving you a hard time right stuff like that and well Carlito, Carlito he does have a target on his back due to attacking Cruz del Toro they didn't mince words they didn't um, hesitate they just basically came out with it and said that he was the one that did it at least they're not gonna let it drag on and then Dom reminds Priest Dom reminds Priest that Carlito helped him. And Damien acknowledges that and pretty much looks at Carlito and says, that's why you're here for, for another week or you're here this week. But he has to keep earning his keep, you know. Carlito has to prove to them that he belongs. Now, backstage, and backstage, boy, we, went, we were in the backstage a lot. Now, Sonya Deville is back after nine months of being out with a knee injury 
And then backstage, she tries to talk to Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark, but Shayna is not buying what DeVille is selling. Who knows what she's up to? You know how she was in the past, you know, especially her when she was the, what's that, general manager, not general manager, but she was an authority figure, right? And kind of pushing her weight around and making all the women just hate her guts. So is anybody going to accept her back? I mean, she has some friends, but I mean, even Zoe was willing to soak her hand and and when they entered, she introduced herself and then Zoe, like I said, Shayna wasn't having it. She just said, hey, let's go. Because, you know, they got a match coming up, you know. You got to prepare. Now, the awesome truth defend their world tag team championship against J.D. McDonough and Finn Balor of the Judgment Day. And I was thinking to myself when they're on their way to the ring, to Judgment Day, I'm thinking, why are these guys going to ever think WWE of breaking them up? Like, why is it that a faction always has to be broken up? These guys are doing their best work right now. Even J.D. McDonough. Who was J.D. McDonough before he was in the Judgment Day? He was a guy who people had their eyes on. Even myself, a fan of his too, from his days in uh, um, NXT UK. Had great matches against, um, who, was the, who did he wrestle? Tyler Bate? Or like that when they were uh, the NXT UK champion? But he had some great matches. I believe he wrestled Gunther, I believe. But it's like... He's a great performer, a great technical wrestler, much like in the same vein as his pretty much his teacher and his mentor, that being, uh, you know, Finn Balor. They're mirror images, they're copies, carbon copies of each other. And um, that's the reason why, you know, him being a part of Judgment Day, because if Judgment Day splits up, where is he going to go? I mean, he could stick with Finn Balor and they could do their thing, you know, maybe create another faction. But I think that Judgment Day has legs. They should just keep Judgment Day going for as long as they can. Why break them up? These guys are doing their greatest work. Dom, same thing. Dom was made because of Judgment Day. It wasn't because of him on his own. Even with his dad, nothing was happening. But here he is. And look at that. He's one of the most hated heels, booed all the time when he goes into the thing. And it could be fabricated. It could be like, but he's still getting reactions. And that's a good thing. Now, Dawson Truth, like I said, they defended their, they're gonna, they will defend their titles against you know, the Judgment Day. And did I hear Cole say that Awesome Truth grabbed the wrong belts when they won that six-pack challenge at WrestleMania? I guess that means that they did an audible. I'm not saying it was, but they did that and decided that both tag titles would individually be up for grabs. I mean, it kind of has me scratching my head at, you know, Michael Cole's statement, his comment. Um, Because I remember watching it, and I thought it kind of felt odd or weird that they were supposed to do that. And then they just basically said, okay, you know what, listen. Because they never said, if, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they, they didn't say that individually these titles will be up for grabs. And whoever gets SmackDown will be on SmackDown. Whoever wins Raw goes on Raw. It, I, it still, wasn't it still said that it was the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships that were up for grabs? But uh, everybody liked it. I know, everybody, I know I did. I enjoyed it. I thought that that was a good idea, a good um, thing to do instead of just, again, another undisputed title match, and then those guys are going to hold those, those, all you know those those all those titles at once. You know, it worked out for good. It worked out in the in the, in the end. It worked good. And then uh, in the end, as Carlito tried to keep the Judgment Day's hopes of becoming champs alive by interfering, well, Braun Strowman made him pay, and then the truth hits. The attitude adjustment and retains the goal for he and the Miz. So I guess Strowman was the Andre the Giant that our truth alluded to. I mean, he was more athletic than Andre. Well, in Andre's later years, because people tend to forget that Andre was a a beast. He was a guy who was throwing drop kicks. I mean, I'm not talking about standing drop kicks. He was doing it from the turnbuckle. You know, he was flying all over the place. He was uh, very athletic in his younger years, but his condition forced him to always, made him continue to grow his, you know, stuff like that because of that growth hormone that they didn't figure out at that time of Andre's, you know, life. They did that with Big Show. That's how he kept Big Show from growing because they were able to do surgery to stop for all that fluid, the growth fluid or growth hormones to keep going and keep making people grow and grow, you know, and... You imagine if Andre would have had that surgery, he would have lived a lot longer and given us some more uh, good um, moments with him before he passed, you know? 
And um, like I said, um, the awesome truth do retain their titles. And uh, it's a good thing to do that right now. You know, the, the Judgment Day don't need that right now. But eventually they'll probably win the title. But we'll just wait and see. And then backstage, Becky congratulates Lyra. But Liv takes a cheap shot. I don't know if she topped her in the throat. But she takes a cheap shot on Lyra Valkyria and punches her. So I guess her heel turn is slowly coming to fruition. She's embracing it now. It's like, hmm, is she or isn't she? She's kind of riding the line, riding that, you know, where is she? And then you see it here. And, you know, she's a heel. And I didn't hear anybody cheer her. People were booing her. So I think they're embracing it too. And I think it's best for her because she actually is coming into her own and actually is coming off as a believable heel. A little more work, but looks like she's on the right track. And then also backstage, boy, there's a lot of backstage segments. We see Zayn licking his wounds after a hard-fought match earlier. And then Big Bronson Reed has a message for the IC champ as he stares him dead in the eye. He's all about business and looking for his biggest payday in the form of the Intercontinental Championship. Sorry there, Big Bronson Reed, but you're not going to, you just happen to, you're not going to win it because you just happen to be challenging Sammy at a time when he just won the title at WrestleMania. So he's going to hold that title for a long time. You're coming off beating a guy who had a 666th day reign and then this guy's just going to hold it for 30, 40 days. I don't know. I don't think that's going to be happening. I mean, Otis shows up. And he is sorry. Genuinely sorry. And Sammy knows this and wants Otis to be a better man and stop listening to Gable. And start listening more to the WWE universe. Yeah, we hear us, he hears us out there, we're cheering him, saying his name, and he, he was just he just stands there, uh, not knowing what to do. Even after he gets slapped in the face not once, but then in another instance he gets slapped again, and he's just taking it from Gable. And I thought he was gonna attack Sammy back there, but he didn't. Now, Becky cuts a promo, shocker, a lot of promos, and points out that her opponent in five days has a new attitude and that this is what Liv feels will allow her to beat her for the title because she hasn't beat her yet. She's never beaten Becky. And then Liv comes out and what is she going to say? Hmm. Pretty much that she has a purpose that doesn't include any of the women in WWE. She vows to continue her Liv Morgan revenge tour and captured the women's title from Becky. Becky tells her, tells of her purpose that hasn't changed in 22 years. In short, that she wants to leave this place better than the way she found it. Now, Becky asks Liv, after 10 years, what are you going to do after you get your revenge? After the whole revenge thing is over, what's next? And then Liv states that she will become the new world champ and sit atop the women's division in WWE. Very good promos on both ends. Liv really looks comfortable in this new role. She's going to be a heel. I love how she just comes across as someone who is pretty much sounding like she don't give a you-know-what about what the crowd thinks, what Becky thinks. You know, she's talking about to Becky like she's so self-absorbed. It's all about her. She's so, you know what I mean, like selfish and all that stuff. And she just doesn't care what anybody thinks. Her rage and anger for Rhea Ripley has blinded her from her real the people who support her, her fans, fellow superstars, right? But I think this is what needs to be done because Becky needs to go against a, a super heel, a, a uber eel, a, a uber eel, uber heel, and that's you know right now that's uh, Liv Morgan. Now. Damien Priest, backstage, what else do you think he would be feeling? He's disappointed in his boys. They didn't win the gold. Carlito messed up. JD is ordered. And now then he messed up, so JD is ordered to ask Pierce for a match with Strowman. Remember last week, he warned him, don't get involved. Stay out of this, right? And then he comes back and, you know, messes in the Judgment Day business. So he's asking them to do that. And it didn't look like uh, JD was hesitant. He was almost like, okay, I'll do it. 
yeah, you're the one that started it. You're the one that said what you said to Braun. Braun and you know, maybe if you hadn't done that, maybe Braun wouldn't have done what he did. But then again, he's always out for the guys who are getting bullied. He doesn't want people getting bullied. He hates that. Like I said in the past, if you ever see that interview he had with Chris Van Vliet, <clears throat> he talked about being bullied in uh, school. And didn't like it. So he doesn't like when anybody else gets bullied. So he's going he's going to be the one that champions them. And make sure that nothing happens to those guys. And then. Damien Priest just tells the guys flat out. I don't recognize you guys anymore. And then he just leaves. He just walks out the dressing room. Leaving them to. And well, actually if Balor goes. You know what? He's right. You know, So he knows. He knows that they have to do something. To get back on top and. I'll be challenged for those titles again. Now, a fatal four-way with number one contender tag team match for the Women's Tag Team Championship. Kyrie Sane and Dakota Kai. Then you have Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark, followed by Maxine Dupree and Ivy Nile, and then Caden Carter and Katana Chance. But first backstage, Xavier Woods is cleared to compete. whoop de doo and then, much like last week with Kofi, Karrion Cross tells Woods that there is always time to more time to turn things around. I'm like, huh? I mean, are WWE hinting at a heel turn for the through day? I mean, they could use a fresh coat of paint. I liked them when they were heels. Seriously, did. So, let's see if that happens. Don't know. Maybe it's a way to lure them in and then they're going to destroy them. All of the uh, authors of pain. Now, on to the Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Match. And in the end, I'm not, you think I was going to go through the whole match? It was Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark who win. And did they win? Really? Or is it just another match that they win that will eventually end up with them not winning the titles? We've seen this scenario before. Yes, it's been presented before. They've won a, a type of match like this or just a number one contender match before and they came up short. Now, again, another situation like with Bronson Reed where these, these two ladies are in a situation where they're going after champions that just won their title and they're not going to take it off them right now. They could do a swerve and say, yeah, we're going to take it off so that we could just have a shock factor. But these aren't just normal, everyday, you know, women wrestlers in WWE. They're, they're two of the top singles wrestlers, meaning Jade and Bianca. Together, they're a powerful force. Why would you take the titles off them? That wouldn't make sense. Now, Louis Kaiser, backstage, has some strong words for the Celtic warrior Seamus. He says that he's nothing but a keyboard warrior. You know, after the match was done and everything, he goes straight to his, uh, you know, like X account or whatever. And, and pretty much he's saying that, yeah, he's a warrior on there. He's, you know, he's tough behind there. But, and then... Pretty much uh, tells him that he should stay home and protect his legacy. Because if he returns, Ludwig Kaiser is going to put him down. Right? I like to see that. I like to see uh, Kaiser try. It's just like with J.D. McDonough. I like to see him put uh, Braun in his place for meddling in uh, Judgment Day business. <laughs> we'll see. Now, Drew is backstage. Boy, they sure love that man. They must have catering over there. That the food is so good that they just they just can't keep from going back, going staying in the back, you know, in the back area. And then uh, he says, "Screw Adam Pierce. Why? Because of nothing. Because I'm not including him in tonight's Raw episode. I almost forgot about him. And also about the whole thing with uh, Punk. I thought they're going to continue it. It's been intriguing. They're back and forth. You know. And then he calls out the paper champion, Damian Priest. Those are his words. I don't think he's a paper champion, but I can understand why he says that. And then he tells him that he should stop focusing on all the other stuff like Carlito, LWO, and focus on their world title match. Because at WrestleMania, he beat a real champion. Yeah, 5 minutes, 40 seconds, his reign. But he did beat Seth Rollins. And then soon, he says he's going to beat Damian Priest. <clears throat> That's going to be a good match. Very physical. They're pretty similar in size, height. And uh, it's going to be whoever can take the advantage and use what they can bring that the other one, the other one doesn't and use that to give them that edge to win, in the, to win the match. 
And in short, another backstage segment, no matter what, says Otis, as he promises to help Gable win the IC title. He says, we are going to, you know, we are going to work on winning my IC Intercontinental title. And then Otis was going like, yeah, you know, he wouldn't say it. And he goes, say it, say it. And he goes, no matter what. So he was hesitant to do what he did to Sammy. Is he going to be hesitant this time? Or is he going to stab, uh, J uh, what do you call it, Gable in the back? And then Gable, you know, is going to be on the receiving end of uh, Otis's wrath. Now, tonight is the night, says Jey Uso. There is no tomorrow. It's the semifinals for the King of the Ring tournament. And the audience is saying, yeet. Main event, Jey Uso. Then yeet. Versus the ring general, Gunther Yeet. The last time you met, Oos, I almost had you. We have unfinished business right here, Oos. Tonight, I finished the job. You're going to you're gonna catch a Yeet down, and I'm going to catch a crown. It's main event time, Oos. And as he hits the stage and inside the arena, the Fireflies beat him there. And if you didn't know, Bray Wyatt's fiance, some people say his wife, uh, Jojo, he gave actually gave um, you know Jay her blessing because when I was re you know listening to her report and all that, she actually was watching. You know when he came out one time, you know the first time he came out and all the fireflies just were there, and it's a and it's a amazing mind blowing sight. You see all these, you know these fireflies, all these people phones in people's hands and they're going up and down like this. It's like something that I would love to be in that that crowd in that arena, feeling that feeling that vibe, man. Feeling that man, it must be something else, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, she gave him her blessing to pay tribute to Wyndham, and then he allowed him that honor. And uh, you know, a lot of these guys were close friends with uh, with uh, Wyndham, with um, Bray Wyatt, and uh, you know, his, his 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 loss and him being gone now is still felt. Now. Monday Night Raw. I mean, I'm like, really, Cole? You're going to try and make that trend? Like, it, well, it might, especially with these sheep, you know, who's going to probably chant that from now on, you know, put it under social media and say, oh, it was Monday, Monday Night Raw. You know, it's kind of hokey. But whatever. Now, things get physical early on, and Gunther starts off by chopping Jay in the corner, lighting him up not only once but twice, and using that Fryer, frying pan sized hand to deliver a right hand to Jay's chest as well. But Jay, ever resilient, delivers three forearm shots to Gunther and an uppercut for good measure and drives him to the corner. He mounts the corner, bringing down punches to Gunther and delivers a signature wavy arm. You know, he does this thing and then bam, you know, follows up with a right hand that drops the ring general and causes him to roll to the outside. But Gunther goads Jay to charge him. And Jay ends up, you know, running to the corner post. And then Gunther targets the right arm and shoulder and wraps it around the ring post. And on the outside, rams him into the steel steps. Gunther is dictating the pace. Wearing Oos down, but Jay delivers a Samoan drop out of the Kimura on top on the top turnbuckle, which is a pretty sick, sick sight, man. It was a really good move. And the guy did. And then uh, Jay may have regained the momentum and soon may win the match. Now, he does pull off a high cross body from the top turnbuckle, but gets only a near fall. Now, at this point, Jay is eating chops, but he's asking for more as these chops are seemingly waking him up. He even gets a standing enziguri, which rocks Gunther and delivers a super kick soon after, which only gets a near fall. But Gunther eats another super kick. And I want to ask him, how do those taste, Gunther? And Gunther slumps into a corner, and Jay proceeds to stomp a yeet hole into the general. Don't know if he walked it dry, but he sure did stomp. But he sure did stop a yeet hole in him. But the ring general explodes out of the corner with a missile drop kick. I love that drop kick, and I was waiting for it to happen. When is he going to hit it? And he did it right there, and he sets up Jay for a power bomb and delivers it, but only a near fall. But Gunther goes back on the attack and with Jay's injured right arm. Smart. You know, that's that's where you gotta go to. When all else fails, remember the injury and exploit that injury. 
and then he pulls the arm backward as Jay winces in pain. Now Jay slips out and attempts to sp a spear, but Gunther stops him and chops Jay in the back of the neck and then slaps on a sleeper, but Jay turns it into a an attempted pinfall, but gets yet another near fall. Gunther delivers a released German suplex that sets up Jay for the splash, but again a near fall. I mean, he hits it clean, only a near fall. It's like, what a barn burner of a match, really. Now, even a short arm clothesline to Jay can't keep him down. I mean, he decleated him. I mean, he turned him inside out. And I'm thinking, what does Gunther have to do to keep Jay down for the three count? And now frustration sets in as Gunther talks trash to Jay and delivers chop after chop. Jay fights back, but Gunther just chops Jay continually. And just as Gunther is warmed up, warned by the ref, Jay hits a spear and it takes down the ref as well. I mean, he hits Gunther and then his, he inadvertently backhands the ref and the ref is knocked down, not all the way out on his knee, you know. And then uh, Jay does deliver the Uso splash, but the ref is out or is he? Like I said, he was only on one knee. But then, you know, I'm asking, you know, is he out? Is he, is, you know, the ref is out or is he? But then he makes uh, the count, the attempt, but only makes it to two. But Gunther slaps on a sleeper whilst wrapping his legs around Jay like a constrictor. And Jay doesn't tap, but passes out and the ref calls it. Now, Gunther advances to meet either Randy Orton or Tama Tonga in the finals, and I am going for Randy Orton. That's going to be a great one-on-one um, -on -one match. I don't know about Tama Tonga. He's an ultimate heel. I don't know if they're going to make him go against Gunther, who is the ultimate heel as well. So, Randy Orton. You want somebody to put in there that everybody's going to cheer for, and I think it's going to be those two. The women, I'm still on the fence. Because look what they did with Nia. They, made, they had her advance past Jade. No one saw that coming. But is Nia going to advance past Bianca? That's going to be an ultimate test for uh, Lyra. Both women, actually, Bianca and Nia, will be ultimate tests. But it's different styles that she'll be facing. Someone who's imposing, strong, dominant like Nia Jax. And then she's going to go up against somebody who's much like her, athletic, uh, very charismatic, uh, very, very good in the ring, high flying. All of the stuff that Lyra does, Bianca can be, can hit her, can match her hole for hole and all that stuff. Nia's just going to look to ground her. She's not going to try to meet her, you know, um, move for move and hole for hole. It's going to be about her dominating her, probably taking out, a, 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 a exploiting an injury that she might have that maybe we forgot about, but Nia's been doing her homework. Oh, she tweaked the knee that one week. I'm going to go after that knee. Right? Something like that. I mean, what was her injury when she was out, Lyra? I'm trying to remember. Could have been a knee because that's really a common injury by a lot of these people, man. It's like, that that's what it is. And, uh, you know, but that would be a good match. Either way, either way for the women's, that would be a great final. We just have to wait and see, you know. But, uh, you know, it's getting late. So uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, before I do, I uh, just want to thank everybody for... Uh, you know, doing your thing to help me out on my channel, subscribing, liking, you know, and uh, just pop, you know, popping in and watching my video. It goes to show that you guys uh, like what you see and stuff like that. And um, I just ask continually for your support, you know, spread the word. Um, those of you who just stopped in and for the first time, even those of you who have been watching my videos but haven't su subscribed yet, please subscribe, you know. Not only like, not only share, hit that bell icon, you know, comment, but also uh, subscribe because I would really appreciate it and it would help my channel a lot. But anyway, uh, that's my video. So for those of you who stopped by and checked it out, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And until next time, take care and I will see you in my next video.